Hey, welcome to Overtime, where we take Sunday's message further. My name is Jeremy, and I'm your host. And this is a podcast where we just want to ask the questions that we think that you would ask as it relates to Sunday's message. And as we do so, we hope that it helps you grow in your life and your faith. With that being said, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of the podcasts that are coming out. Not only that, hit the like button, because when you do so, it helps us help other people. And if you ever have a question about Sunday's content or about Overtime, you can submit those to overtime at npaustin.com, and we will be sure to get to those in future podcasts. So with that being said, here's a quick recap of Sunday, and then we're going to jump into our conversation today. Hey, it's great to be with you today. We are in part two of this series we kicked off last week where we're talking about prayer. You know, Jesus' disciples, the 12 guys, and these guys were brought up to pray, you know, kind of these memorized prayers or repetition prayers, and then they're hanging with Jesus, and they're like, Jesus, you pray a different prayer every time I hear you pray. And so Peter probably felt this tension. Maybe I'm praying wrong. He looks at Jesus and he says, Jesus, would you teach us to pray? He says, okay, I will. So Jesus says, start with addressing God as your father and then hallowed be his name. Reflect on who God is, his character, his promises. And if we skip this, the danger is we resist what Jesus teaches us next. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In fact, if I, if I wrote it down, I would say this, that the purpose of prayer is to surrender our will, not impose it. So between now and next week, when we pick it up right here, I wanna encourage you to do three things. Find an intentional time and place, declare his greatness. And the longer you spend there, ultimately, is to surrender. Okay. Well, did you watch the Super Bowl? I did. All of it? Every ounce. (laughs) I even started like an hour or two ahead of the Super Bowl. Wow. Did Mm -hmm. you find yourself pulling for some? I feel like sometimes in games like that where I don't really have a team, I'm like, I just notice myself pulling for one. Did you notice? Well, here's something I may, uh, uh, I don't have a hard time admitting this, but it may create some confusion and questions for people listening or watching, um, is I am a DraftKings fan. (laughs) 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 And so, Luke and I. You don't participate, you just cheer them on? No, 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 I participate. So, we have had like 30 bucks on the game. Okay. And here's what that does for me. I'm not promoting this in any sense. I'm not <laughs> sponsored by DraftKings, but um, I am that much more vested in the game. I'm like, I am looking forward to who's going to catch the ball, who's going to throw it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. And so we were, uh, I had my lineup. I was heavy Cincy. Uh-huh. Like I was going Joe Burrows and uh, Chase. Is yep. it Chase? Yeah. I mean, Jamar Chase. Yeah, yeah. Jamar Chase. They were going to like bazillion it. And then their, <laughs> you know, the Cincy defense was just going to like, even though on paper it made no sense. I uh-huh. thought maybe this would be that Super Bowl. You're like, man, that didn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. And then I would win wow. the, I think the top prize was $1 million. Oh, yeah. So. I'm sure you got close. <laughs> 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 no, I donated once more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's how I do it. Not promoting it. Not saying that's healthy for everyone. I'm but. glad you put that little caveat in there. That's good. Sure. I found myself pulling for the Bengals. I don't know. There was just Did that you? gut thing. Yeah. 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 Gosh, it would I have just, been a little bit Cinderella-esque. Yeah. Because the Rams, I mean, they built the team to win. Yeah, they were just Bowl. supposed to, right? They yeah. had so many stars and yeah. like Stafford and all that stuff. But it was like... Are the Bengals going to get back here? Is that going to beat Kansas City again next year? You know, know. that kind of thing. So I know. But I did have – I mean, you've experienced this before, and uh, we talk about this quite often, but the Sunday afternoon, like, feels like a hangover. Mm, it's it's yeah. like you're just going, like, are you kidding cloudy, me? Cloudy. Yeah. yeah, super cloudy and uh, fatigue. So I was bringing that into the Super Bowl. Yeah. And so um, – it makes sense. I may have fallen asleep a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a good one, too. <laughs> yeah, after it's so weird. I mean, I talk 35 minutes a message, you know, yeah. and then I know you experience it, but yeah. it's like all of a sudden I'm so fatigued, like Sunday yeah, we could talk about that someday, and one probably day only someday. pastors care. But <laughs> yeah, no one really cares. So they're like, like, you ran a marathon. Just drink like a bang, four. suck it up, <laughs> move yeah, on with life. That's good. good. Do you have a favorite commercial that you were awake for? Uh, not that I remember. Okay. Yeah. I think there was one of like Peyton somewhere. Like he was, uh, there was mm, something with Peyton. Mm, I do remember a Peyton one. Yeah, vaguely. It was kind of like, I was, I was like, like, oh, oh it's it's Peyton random. Yeah. He showed up somewhere. Yeah. Don't know uh, what that is. I don't remember which one it was either. Yeah, I thought sorry. the crypto one was creative. Got mixed reviews. Oh, from the, people, uh, the bouncing QR. Yeah. Code. yeah. Well, I, I did. Well, I didn't even know that was crypto. Yeah. Because I went and I told Luke, I was like, hey, go do the QR thing. Yeah. 
and I told him to do that, and uh, we never followed up to go, hey, what was that? Yeah, and then the app immediately crashed, right? <laughs> right I heard this, yeah. I, I so read that shy. headline. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. but that was different. I mean, that definitely... Like no words. talked about that one more than any, yeah. That probably was really inexpensive yeah, pay to pay six produce. million dollars for that, right? Yeah, like I mean, for that spot. <laughs> it was six million for the space. Yeah, and one 13 guy. cents for the actual, like, yeah. development of the yeah, isn't that commercial. Wild? The best All part of was how it ended by hitting the corner. Yeah, yeah oh, everybody's yeah. waiting for it to happen the whole time. It the corner <laughs> it's like, at the very, like it hits the corner yeah. and the commercial ends. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah. Brilliant. That's, Brilliant. Yeah, I just saw the beginning. was like, go scan that. Yeah, that was wild. fun. It was good. All right. Well, that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> I'd love to have a sports talk show host. Nobody would care about my insights, but <laughs> I listen to them. We're so really, yeah, fun, we, you know? we're experts there here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, speaking of sports. My old small group leader, transition, Jeff Brown, that's what he would say. Just speaking of one thing, bring up something else random. Speaking yeah. of the Super Bowl, yeah. we talked about prayer this past week. We weekend. did. We were in part, you talked about prayer this past yeah. weekend. We were in part two. Uh, and we've moved on to the next line in the instruction of Jesus teaching us to pray. Mm-hmm. And specifically, we're talking about in prayer, surrendering our will and mm-hmm. saying, you know, not my will, but, but God, your will be done. Um, and so when... Um, we're talking about that. I think one of the questions that is interesting for me is because it, it's pretty foundational for people. Like if, if God doesn't answer a prayer, it can yeah. be a defining moment, you know, then there is. And you talked about that, like yeah. kind of how that sequence goes. But he didn't answer my prayer, so I walked away. I, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't care. My life's no different. Um, so why does it matter if he's there or not? And, and I'm just curious, do you have any thoughts? As, like why is that so foundational to so many people? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, myself included and certainly like before church, but I just— mm-hmm. It seems like that's the purpose of prayer is to get what mm. I want is for my will to be done is, you know, the mm. genie in a bottle type of analogies and stuff. What, yeah. Do you have any thoughts on just why we feel that way, why, why we tend to approach prayer that way? Well, I think a, a simple pragmatic answer would be selfishness. Mm. I think, I mean, it's like I was born selfish. Like sure. it's like one of those things I don't think a lot of people like my parents were like, hey, let me teach you to go mine, you know, me. It's about me. Here's what I want. You know, I want to be fed. I want this candy. I want, you know, me, me, me. So I do think that plays into it. Um, I think that's just, um, you know, part of a human nature thing. And as a follower of Christ, you know, I think, you know, scripturally in, in, in the Bible, it talks about this idea that like we all have sinned. We all have this like this piece of it that that's broken mm-hmm. and uh, we all need to be healed. We all need to be forgiven. We all need to be reconciled with God. And that's um, why Jesus came is to provide that way uh, for us to have peace with God. So I think selfishness plays in there. Um, I also think um, it's interesting. This kind of correlates a little bit with the idea of like, why does a good God or a loving God allow bad things mm-hmm. to happen? Yeah, totally. And that's an interesting question. And, and, um, that is predominantly, and it's being asked around the world, but it's predominantly asked in the West. Yeah. In the West, um, we're so independent. In the West, it's so about us. In the West, it's I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps. And it's, it's you know, I got to figure this idea out. I've got to, you know, come up with a solution. It's about me, and it's got to be unique, and it's got to be distinct. I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody's help. Mm. And I think there's this cultural, like there's this, um, there's this affluence, there's, you know, things are really good for us, even though I know there's hardships that come our way. There's this independence and it's a cultural wave that pushes us into thinking that God owes us, Mm. that God is like the genie in the bottle, that I, I am owed this kind of life, that I need the house with the two cars and the two, you know, freezers in the garage, and I, and if yeah. y- if I'm not going to get those kind of things, or if life doesn't go well for me, then God must not care. God must not be loving. Versus, if you travel around the world, what you're going to see is like some people go, "You ask that question." Yeah. That question has never hit my mind Yeah, because I look at him as my rock and my refuge and my strength. He is my only place of hope. Like my daily life is so difficult here, and especially in third world country or, you know, uh, in Kenya where, you know, there's slums with over a million people. I mean, that's just not even on their radar. Right. God is God is something they look forward to every single day. God is the thing of strength. God is the thing that gives them perseverance, mm-hmm. and he is all good and he is all loving and that's the way they look at him so it's interesting to contrast those yeah and i think there's the cultural push yeah to go it's about you it's independent you figure it out you deserve the best life possible big houses lots of cars great health great relationships great kids and then over here there's the uh, piece that's saying no like god is your rock god is your place of peace god is your place of rest god is like your place that 
you know, uh, as I've talked about throughout the series, like that centers you, that puts your heart and mind on things above. God is something to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. That should be more shocking to people than, <laughs> than it is, you know, know, as you describe that. I mean, yeah. the fact that the, the more affluent part of the world you live in, the more likely you are to have walked away from God because he didn't give you what you wanted. Right. Like that's just a mind boggling type truth. And yet it happens all the time, yeah. you know, it's just, well, and, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about it, I think in part three, but, um, part of what I'm thinking about is the whole idea about, I think it's like Proverbs 28, 29, 30, maybe 27 that says, don't give me too much. Mm, yeah. Like, because if I have too much, the temptation with affluence, the temptation with prosperity is then I might say, who needs the Lord? Mm, yeah. Who needs God? Right. I already got it. Yeah. Like I, I can fix whatever I need to fix. I can do whatever I need to do. Mm-hmm. I can go experience whatever I need to experience. So God, I really don't need you. Yeah. You're kind of this afterthought. If you can like be a bonus to my life, that's great. But like, so there's a temptation yeah. with having prosperity. Yeah. Um, and so I think that plays into it. Why we have this perspective, you know, Hey, unanswered prayers, God, you must be this way. Yeah. And then I think just real quickly, the last piece is a little bit in, in the cultural context that we live in the West in America. We're so independent Yeah. in a biblical context in the first century and around the world today. Um, this idea of being autonomous and independent is just not normal. Mm-hmm. That would be like, oh, what's wrong? Yeah. Like what happened to you? That's a bad thing that you're independent, that you're on your own, that you live in your house by yourself, mm-hmm. or it's just you and your family in your house. That's mm-hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. That, you know, in the first century, for sure, you had aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents. They lived in this kind of adobe kind of house built upon house. This real community raised your kids. You had the sages. You had the wisdom. You had the counsel of life experience that was always at hand, that was helping you raise your children, watching your children, you know, lending a hand. Mm-hmm. It was always about the connection and community. Yeah. And so, like, the idea of being dependent upon a God, of saying, God, like, your will be done, a surrender, that was very normal and a very connected uh, community because yeah. you're surrendering to the sage. You're like, well, their wisdom, or it's far more sacrificial. Like I'm sacrificing for my family. Yeah. And over here, it's like, no, it's about me, yeah. me, my, you know, and yeah. I. So. Yeah. It's like the greatest honor was, uh, or the greatest goal was to bring honor to your family. Mm-hmm. Now it's like celebrated a break free from your family and move to another place and right. go do your own thing and leave them behind and pave your own way. I mean, yeah. so individualistic. And yeah. so your selfishness answer that you started with, like, then that's like bread by it's like a chicken and egg or something. But you know, now culture makes it more ripe for that to thrive and yeah, fascinating. And I don't think it's like, Oh, so we should feel bad about our culture. Right. And it's like, Oh, w- but I, once you're aware of it, it yeah. just is interesting. You it's know? just no way a different angle, different yeah. lens that you kind of see it all through. And hundred percent. Yeah. That's no, that's fantastic. Well then um, the second one I have here is uh, if we're going to do that, if we're going to try to embrace this, like, okay, I'll think about prayer a little different. I'll, I'll start by submitting my will to his, how do you go about, and I will caveat, this is a massive question, <laughs> opinions Super and books simple. and novels and series. 20 second answer. I'm curious, like in a couple minutes, how would you answer it? If I'm like, okay, then what is God's will? If I'm submitting, what is it that I'm even submitting to when I say his will, not mine? How would you answer? How do I discern what God's will is for my life? Yeah, so, you know, as I thought about this, I think the thing that popped in my mind, and as you alluded to earlier, books are written on this. Mm-hmm. I mean, for centuries, um, great thinkers, biblical scholars have you know, thought about it, debated it, talked about it, all kinds of great resources. For me, and the simpler answer is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Uh, Verse 1 talks about this idea that I am sacrificing, like, hey, everything is yours. So it's really the concept of surrender, and I'm surrendering because of who you are. Like, I worship you, and worship is reverence or respect or awe because of the deity because of who who you are. And that's why Jesus said, start with, hallowed be thy name. Mm-hmm. So it talks about that. The more time you spend there going, God, you're my rock and you're my refuge and you're my strength and you know my hurt, you know my pain, you're the reconciler, you're the healer, you're everything, you know what I need tomorrow. And it says, starts there, and then it says, now that that's happened and now that you know who God is, then it says, do not be conformed, and this is verse 2, do not be conformed by the pattern of this world, which means there's a pattern, mm-hmm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And once your mind is beginning to be renewed because you've transformed it, then you will be able to test and approve God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Mm -hmm. So it's this idea 
of like renovating this idea of remodeling. And we've talked about this on a Sunday morning, but like, if you're going to remodel your house, you're taking all the things that are old. Like this is the way that it was designed in the seventies with the Brown and the shag and, you know, carpets and all these kind. Mm -hmm. there was a day and a place for that. Right. But now there's something brand new. That's like, you know, I don't know what's cool today, but yeah. you know, like marble floors maybe, or, you know, white walls and white cabinets. Yeah. I don't know why I'm thinking white, but yeah. it's like all this has been remodeled and it's been replaced. So there's a way, that I used to think about relationships. There's a way I used to think about morality. There's a way I used to think about God. There's a way I used to think about money. There's a way I used to think about the world and culture. The, um, and now that's been replaced by um, God's way, if you will, yeah. and God's ideas about relationships and love as I have loved you and serve as I have served you. And now he becomes the standard that I'm living my life by. And as his standard replaces my old standard, you have clarity. And all of a sudden, it's like, man, <clears throat> what should I do in this situation? Well, it's clearer to you than you've ever experienced before. Mm, yeah. It's the Matthew 5, 8 example. The righteous will see God clearly. There's a clarity when our minds are renewed. Mm -hmm. And our minds are renewed through connection and relationship to where somebody's encouraging us and spurring us to understand who God is and how we can relate to him and what God's called us to do. Our minds are renewed through spiritual disciplines like reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden you're reading these pages and you're like, man, I've just, God, you were so clear on how I should treat my children. You're so clear on my neighbor. You're so clear on the people who are radically different or have different, you know, thoughts or opinions than I do and how to treat them and how to love them. And that clarity from the scripture gives you such discernment in what the will of God is mm. and that spiritual discipline or that relationship that's given you. And all of a sudden it's not overnight, but over time your mind is renovated and you're able to get to a place to go like, not always, not perfect, but you're like, man, it, like the will of God is really clear in this situation. Wow. Wow. That was a, I didn't time you. But that was an incredibly concise answer to a huge question. <laughs> I'm normally not concise, so if I, I don't know. I'm sitting here, like, just impressed. Well, thank <laughs> you, like, Jordan. Lots of practical Let's in there. Right here lots now, of like, I rarely could. get the concise What piece a moment. Yeah. No, no, yeah. it's incredibly helpful. Well, it is that's like, um, you know, and, and, and I even loved, like, you know, your imagery of, like, okay, we can't. We can't come close to understanding like all that is his understanding and all mm -hmm. that he is working together. Um, and, you know, at the same time, being able to to move in that direction and get more clarity of what his will is, it, it, it kind of empowers us to do this very thing. It, you know, the more we like submit and understand in his will, it's like the maybe we're more willing to do it again in the future it becomes this kind of, mm -hmm. you know, pattern or habit of decision making, you know, big decisions in your life or whether it's, you know, morality or whatever it might be and trying to make a decision to seek his will, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's all in what you just, you just spoke to. So it's yeah. Really and, so helpful. And, and I would just caveat that to say, it's not emotionally satisfying at times his will. Right. Um, but I do think his will is one of those things. That's why surrender is such a big deal. Trust is such a big deal. That's why Jesus said, Hey, hang on to your life, hang on to your ideas, hang on to what you want to do. Yeah. You can, that's yeah. your option, but you actually lose out on something. Mm. But if you lose that for me and trust me, mm -hmm. even if that's not emotionally satisfying, like I don't want to forgive Jill sometimes. You know, I don't want to be patient sometimes. I don't want to go ask, you know, apologize and know my piece of the pie sometimes. Yep. You know, what about me? I mean, you hurt me. Hmm. And there are times where it's like, that's not emotionally satisfying, but I'm telling you, experientially, uh, that time and time again, when you go, I trust you, I surrender to you, it's clear what you've called me to do. I don't, emotionally, I'm not there yet. Yep. But when you actually do it, there is something that you enjoy that Jesus promised on the other side of surrendering, as he said in Luke 9, 24, which I shared on Sunday. You actually find life. You actually find the thing to go like, that's exactly what I wanted mm. and desired, but it required me to surrender yeah. and to your will. But I had discernment of your will because of what yeah. we were talking about. So. Yeah, so let's stick with the uh, emotionally unsatisfying a little bit here. Um, <laughs> yeah. So when it comes then to unanswered prayers, like yeah. we make the bold request and the, the very worst happens or nothing mm -hmm. changes or the diagnosis, you know, stays the same. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we respond? What does it look like to, to react, you know, faithfully in those situations? Yeah, I mean, I, I shared on Sunday, and I can speak, uh, you know, I can speak perhaps from my experience and, and maybe give some insight into this. But, you know, I talked about my mom and hearing the news she has cancer and praying and God didn't answer the prayer. And then I think m more emotionally uh, hurtful was watching my mom as this frail, sick woman mm -hmm. plead with God not to suffer in a way that she was not only suffering, but suffered even more severe in that way. Mm. 
and then plead with God not to die in a way that she so did not want. Mm -hmm. And that's what she suffered. And eventually I watched her die from the very thing I had previously, like a month previous, watched her beg God not to die in that way. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, I think you've got to be human. I think you've got to be real. I think you've got to be honest. And I, for me personally, I'm grateful I had connection and relationship to go, go like, just be honest and go how like pissed off I was at God, how upset I was with God, how angry I was with God, how hurt I was to lose my mom. Um, and I didn't have to go like in my room by myself and press it down and just say, suck it up mm-hmm. and live. At least you had a mom. Mm-hmm. I was able to go in connection in a community with people. And this is why we talk about connection all the time. It's so important. And just say, here's the real unfiltered thoughts of Buck who just lost his mom. Wow. And that's it. Like, this is all of me. So, and there were people who were able to sit there to be mature enough to like, not try to fix me and quote a bunch of scripture for me. There were people who, uh, you know, were able just to put their arms and like hug and cry. Uh, there were there were people that just uh, poured um, huge doses of empathy mm-hmm. and uh, met me where I was at. Um, and that is a huge part of, I think, unanswered prayer, um, to have that connection, a place to go process. And then the other piece, um, and this will sound weird, I think, when you first hear it, but I had to forgive God. Um, and not like in the concept, the true concept of forgiveness— But that's as close as I could describe it. It felt like I had to forgive him for what he did to my mom Mm. and for what I experienced. And it's not like I had to walk through the steps and stages of forgiveness and what did you do and what do I struggle with as a result and what do you owe me. And I mean, all of that's part of it. There are flavors of that. But what it really was was a journey of growing in perspective of who God is, Mm -hmm. growing in perspective of his promises, and growing in knowledge and perspective of even a life to come, eternity to come. So the more it felt like my perspective broadened on God, that I didn't give up and walk away, but I actually leaned in and discovered more of who he was, it actually opened a perspective or kind of a window for me. To It felt like I forgave him. Hmm. It felt like there was a release of, you don't owe me that. Yeah. Like, I, I love you, and I fully trust you, and I want to be with you. Yeah. And there was like that switching. And that, again, it's not overnight. Yeah. That happened through community. That happened through spiritual disciplines. That happened through knowledge. That happened through books. That happened through mentor relationships. That happened through a counselor. Yeah. And I came to a place to go, that is, as close as I can describe it, it felt like I forgave God yeah. for that, that unanswered prayer. Well, it's, it's, it's almost like why so often these, these greatest pains are like these greatest growth mechanisms, right? Because it's like you're your prior understanding of God was no longer like compatible with the world you're living in. You know, like he didn't show up. It didn't change. My mom passed in the worst way. So the way I understood related to connected, it's, it's not going to be the same. I'm either going to walk away or this is going to evolve. Right. And that, that's that forgiveness concept. And I I know what you mean by that. You know, I I like the phrasing of it because of the kind of the emotion it evokes and the process you have to, to go through on the other side of, you know, relationship with him. Yeah. If you're going to continue relationship with him at a different or deeper level. right? And again, I think this brings out what I said on Sunday, that time is a prerequisite to big pictures, mm-hmm. to seeing perspective, to getting perspective. And there are so many things when I was 10 or 15, yeah. my parents said no, that I looked at them and I felt like you just don't get me. That's hurtful. That's you, you don't understand. Like, you know, I'm angry at you yeah. and I want to walk away from you. Yeah. And then at 25, 35, it felt like I forgave them. Yeah. Well, what happened is I got perspective. Mm. What happened is I got time. What happened is I got understanding. And I'm like, oh, of course. Like, I wouldn't have let me do that 15-year-old thing that you said no to that at the time. Like, I ran away because you said no. Yeah. But you really had my best interest in mind, and you really were loving me. Yeah. I just couldn't see it in that moment. Right. And that's why time is such a precious thing. And they're problems in life that we just don't have enough time to solve. Yep. I mean, they may require a thousand years of perspective yep. to look back and go, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's fair. That's just, and that's loving. I couldn't see it in the moment though. 
Yeah. Yeah. And these, and these moments of, of things that even aren't good that can be contributing to a greater good happening, right? It doesn't even affirm that everything that, that does happen is good, yeah. but there's this greater, you know, it's the God's will question that we go back to this greater mm-hmm. will that is, that is happening. So I think these are, uh, I feel like everybody listening who is alive, it, you don't have to be a Christian uh, to feel like you've had unanswered prayer, unanswered mm-hmm. hopes, unanswered, you know, flare prayers, you know, the whole state of Ohio probably this week, Cincinnati fans, right. you know, and silly things or in the most serious things of life, you know, loved ones and in moments um, that are the deepest valleys. This is something that people can relate with. So I feel like this has been really helpful. Thanks for, thanks for sharing a lot of these, sure. these thoughts and pointers. And I'm excited for where we're going with the, the rest of the series, if you uh, if you guys haven't seen any of it yet, be sure to catch up, and we'll be in part three this week. Yeah, part three is all about give me this, you know, the things I need, my daily bread, and forgive me as I forgive those on the other side of me. I think there's a whole lot more to what Jesus is saying there, so I can't wait to talk about it. Wow, cool. I'm excited. It's going to be right. great. See you guys.